Laparoscopic Suturing of the Vaginal Cuff, a Surgical Education Module. The objectives of this video are to review the items needed for practicing laparoscopic vaginal cuff closure using a validated model and box trainer. Also to highlight the key steps required for adequate and efficient performance of this task and to demonstrate vaginal cuff closure with three different port configurations. To perform this task, you will need the following items. A vaginal cuff model, one to two clips, support object, a long suture with a knot at the end, two laparoscopic needle drivers, and a laparoscopic box trainer. To set up the vaginal cuff model, first arrange two clips towards the back of the box. Next, fold the bottom of the vaginal cuff model and clip onto the board. To elevate the vaginal cuff opening, place a supporting object underneath. The vaginal cuff model used here is composed of corduroy fabric, which represents the vagina, and an internal neoprene layer, which represents the vaginal epithelium. This table shows all of the materials needed to create the validated cuff model. The contralateral port configuration can be utilized while standing on either side. The right hand is located in a right lower quadrant port and the left hand in a left lower quadrant port. Prior to needle insertion, the suture should be grasped outside the box, one centimeter from the needle swedge, in the same orientation as desired for suturing. The needle can be introduced via direct trocar entry or with a backloading technique, depending on the size of the needle and trocar. After insertion, grasp the needle with the non-dominant hand, approximately one-third the distance from the needle tip. The needle can now be manipulated to alter the position. To do this, maintain a light grasp of the needle in the left hand. Move the right hand as needed to optimize the needle position for loading. With the dominant hand, load the needle approximately two-thirds the distance from the needle tip. Be sure to set the needle driver perpendicular to the shaft of the needle. We also recommend using a ratcheted driver to assist with needle stabilization. Next, grasp the anterior vaginal epithelium at the right apex. Insert the needle at a 90 degree angle to the tissue. It is important to advance the needle straight through the tissue prior to rotating your hand. Once the needle tip is visualized, then proceed with rotating the needle. When the needle exits the vagina, it should incorporate the vaginal epithelium. Grasp the needle with your assisting driver just distal to the tip, rotate the needle out of the tissue completely, and reset the needle with your dominant hand. Next, grasp the posterior vagina and epithelium and pass the needle through at a 90 degree angle. Grasp the needle just distal to the tip, rotate out of the tissue completely, and reset the needle. Use your assisting hand to pull the suture through all the way before placing your next bite. The knot simulates the loop on the end of a unidirectional barbed suture. Continue these steps along the entire length of the vaginal cuff. After each anterior and posterior bite, it is important to place traction on the suture to ensure a tight closure of the cuff. Aim to space the bites approximately one centimeter apart and one centimeter behind the cut edge of the vagina. When suturing on a live patient, it is important to always keep the needle within the field of view in order to avoid inadvertent injury to surrounding structures. If the needle leaves the field of view, its location must always be known. We recommend hubbing the needle at the needle driver trocar so its off-screen location is never in question. Once you have reached the opposing apex, use laparoscopic scissors to trim the suture flush with the tissue. The ipsilateral port configuration demonstrated here involves standing on the right side. The right hand is located in a right lower quadrant port and the left hand in a right upper quadrant port. The surgeon may prefer to stand on the patient's left side depending on hand dominance and comfort. For optimal ergonomics, begin at the left apex and suture anterior to posterior 
sequentially towards the right apex. Adjusting the table height and or using steps can enhance positioning for comfort in the shoulders, elbows, and wrists. The midline port configuration demonstrated here involves standing on the left side. The right hand is located in a suprapubic port and the left hand in a left lower quadrant port. The surgeon may prefer to utilize their left hand through the midline port depending on hand dominance and comfort. For optimal ergonomics, we recommend beginning at the right apex and suturing anterior to posterior sequentially towards the left apex. These are the critical steps for adequate and efficient vaginal cuff closure.